One line that stood out to me in your story was looking like a banker but sounding like a crypto radical. And that kind of sums up the, these guys who you're talking about. Yeah, I think uh, Lily Katz might have written that. Or maybe we wrote it together side by side. But yeah, no, that's right. I mean, we, we were just talking a second ago before the break about, you know, sort of almost like two different factions within kind of like the anthropological landscape of crypto. You've got kind of the radicals who are really purposeful about the idea that they want to overthrow the existing financial system. I mean, Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin's very first white paper, the one written anonymously, mm -hmm. um, is all about disintermediating the big banks. I mean, this is the, the part of the idea of crypto is that you know Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo and JP Morgan wouldn't have the same role that they had. A whole, whole idea of trust in the system would change. But these guys, especially our main character, Arya Bolafrishan, really come from sort of, they're, they're like as establishment as it gets. You know, they have fancy relatives. They've, a lot of them went to Harvard. They come from Goldman Sachs. And so they're more in line with people like Mike Novogratz, who that's a sort of a group we're following. People who are from the existing financial system, right. but are sort of drawn to Bitcoin because it's sort of, it's, it's captured something in the zeitgeist. To be fair to Goldman, he was only there for two years. And you have, I love what you write, you say there's no track record of his own in digital money whatsoever. They have a, tr a strategy that is legally foggy in some way. A white paper that lays out a Crete's plan is a mishmash of Wall Street and crypto strategies whose promises are giant and contradictory. <laughs> I'm afraid these white papers, an awful lot of them, are just rubbish. Well, part of uh, what interests us is that, um, you know, a lot of these projects are going to fail. In fact, I think the numbers in the story, I think that there's something like 600 coins yeah. that already have already gone defunct. And a lot of those, by the way, are absolute like scams or frauds. But the truth is that some of them are probably going to succeed. And that creates... Do you think creates... will succeed? Do you think this guy is not a scam? Well, I'm, I don't think even Arya knows that. Uh, in fact, there, there's a line in, in the story about how this is sort of like Game of Thrones and like e even the main characters don't know who the good guys or the bad guys are. I mean, the truth of the matter is that some of these people have already found immense financial success. Some of them think that they genuinely are going to do revolutionary things. You know, it's, it's definitely unlikely that it's going to be these guys. But for us as journalists who follow Wall Street and, and especially young people at the big banks, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to watch them react to sort of these crypto dreams. And they're drawn to it even after, by the way, the bubble has sort of burst. Yeah. They, they still seem drawn to it. So what is this guy Arya's specific idea? What is he pitching to investors, the mishmash of strategies? What, what's his strategy? Okay, sure. So it's called a Crete. And you should basically think about it like a hedge fund, but instead of going out and raising money and having people give them cash in exchange for you know a chunk of, of, uh, of, of a vintage of a fund, they're giving them coins. And the coin basically gives them a right to some of the profits. Ooh. So it's like you buy you know, one max coin, or in this case, I think it's going to be called literally an accrete coin, and you know, it gives you a percentage of the profits. So you know, he's going to invest in a basket of portfolios, you know, uh, stocks but, and bonds and private equity and venture capital, and then the coin will give you, you know, a this stake. This is a tantamount example of when you don't need blockchain to underlie this particular business case. The only thing that they're avoiding is that you have to put in an awful lot of money as a high net worth individual. Right?